Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of Isaiah, chapter 22. Now, in this particular passage, as you read in this, uh, this section, you'll recognize that there is a heading at the top that speaks about the prophecy against Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem experienced a, uh, an invasion. Uh, the people, uh, the city was broken down. There, was a, uh, there were problems there. Um, the, the leadership of the city was carried off in some particular way. I don't think this was the Babylonian captivity, but I do think that there was some, uh, some invasion that, that happened here. And it's interesting that uh, Isaiah tells us at this point, he says, In that day you looked to the weapons of the house of the forest, and you saw that the breaches of the city of David were many. You collected the waters of the lower pool, and you counted the houses of Jerusalem, and you broke down the houses to fortify the wall. You made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but you did not look to him who did it or see him who planned it long ago. Do you follow what he's saying there? That when you were threatened by these uh, external forces, you did all of your preparations. Your trust was in the fact that you had refortified the walls, that you had weapons that you had prepared that you had a supply of water to make sure that you were going to be able to withstand this siege but you didn't look to Christ you didn't look to the God that created you the one that actually brought though that judgment upon you you didn't turn to him and he goes on it's very interesting he goes on and he says in that day the Lord of hosts called for weeping and mourning for baldness and wearing sackcloth, and behold, you instead invested in joy and gladness, killing oxen and slaughtering sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. You said, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. This is the iniquity that will not be atoned for until you die, says the Lord of hosts. We live in a very similar day. If you haven't figured out, if you haven't followed world events and uh, even domestic events here, you, you have put your head in the sand, essentially. But we live in a day when, the, when, when prophecies are being fulfilled, when there are threats against us. And our job here is not to eat and drink for tomorrow we die, it isn't to uh, consume everything that we can while we can do it. Our job should be to turn in obedience and mourning to the God of Israel. He calls for them to go to sackcloth. Uh, he doesn't use the word fasting here, but very often that is connected to uh, sackcloth and ashes. And that should be the response of the church in this day. We should be looking at the world events and are, are we to be involved in standing against some of those? Of course we are. But we should look first to the God of Israel. Our first appeal should be to the one that has allowed these things to come upon us because of our infidelity, because our faithlessness. And this is what we need to, uh, he's the one that we need to appeal to, not to, uh, uh, not to all of our political uh, uh, institutions and all of, of those things. Are those things wrong? Not at all. It's right and proper for us to do that. But again, this is a matter of priority. Who do we go to first? Where do we start in uh, in dealing with much of the devastation that is happening in the world around us. We go to the Lord who has allowed those things to come in because he has seen the faithlessness of his people, of his church. The scripture says that judgment begins with the household of God. We need to turn to him in mourning 
and in uh, uh, not morning before noon, morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. We need to turn to him and mourn and weep and fast and, and make clear to him the, 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 the sorrow that is in our souls over all that has gone on around us. It has been because we have been faithless. It has been because we have not stood firm for the God of Israel and the, and the revelation of his word. And so I invite you to add that. If that's not already a part of your time of prayer, if there aren't any kinds of, of expressions of mourning over the destruction and the devastations of our world, do it right now and, and turn to him and let his word and, 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 le and let him be the one that, uh, that you turn to in this particularly difficult time. Father, we ask you to help us to see that you have allowed the things that are going on around us in order to bring us back to the Savior. Forgive us that we have allowed our world to so be devastated that, um, that we have turned away from, from you and from your truth. Lord, we recognize that the uh, descent of our society comes because the church has not been willing to stand for you. Forgive us and restore in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day now.